Welcome back bandits, I'm Red Bandit and in today's Red Dead Online video I have a little bit of a different video for you guys. I'm going to be walking you through 10 things you probably didn't realise about the new update. And these tips are really going to help you guys earn the most amount of money, find secret items and make the most out of your roles without actually having to do certain things that would normally be required to do so. So if you enjoyed this video make sure you guys subscribe and leave me some support down in in the comments. But the first thing I want to show you guys or talk to you guys about and that is going to be that Madame Nazar actually moves around the map. Now we're starting off on quite an easy one here and quite an obvious one but I've actually seen tons of people on Reddit and on the GTA forums saying where is Madame Nazar? Where is she? I cannot find her. Well you'll find that Madame Nazar moves around on the map pretty much every day and the best way to find her if she has disappeared from the location that you thought she was in is by using your map and going to the index and scrolling through the menu. Now there may be a few times where you do that and you still can't see her. Well that's because Madame Nazar is currently moving around the map because believe it or not she does move location quite frequently. So I thought that was a good one to start off with because a lot of people over on the internet like I said are unaware that that is the case. The next tip is going to be completely catered towards the collector and that is going to be always loot bodies no matter if you're on mission or not. As you can see in this gameplay right here I'm going around looting bodies and there you go I found a tarot card. Also a little bit further on in my gameplay a little bit later on in the day I was in this canyon here clearing out a gang hideout normally you know the best thing you get is a bit of jewellery as you can see there I found a gold tooth from this hideout but if we skip forward a tiny bit I also found an antique alcohol bottle which is actually worth quite a lot of money. Now tip number three here is also going to kind of be joint in with this but I have something special to say about this. As you can see I'm going around looting bodies and uh, my controller goes ahead and disconnects in the worst time possible. Now something I need to tell you is that as soon as this controller reconnected again I saw that I had ranked up my collector and I was thinking well what have I ranked up, what have I found? It turns out that I found this time round an ancient arrowhead which you're going to see right here when the gameplay comes back. Now, the reason why this is a separate tip and trick is because although I haven't got any gameplay of it, you can now actually pick up ancient arrowheads from carcasses of animals. Now, you have to listen to me carefully here because like I said, I haven't got any gameplay of it. But you're going to find things on the map where you see white or red paw prints. If you see a white or a red paw print on your map and it's not an animal that you've shot yourself, make sure you skin that animal carcass because you can also find ancient arrowheads within the carcasses of dead animals especially if you see them and you haven't shot them yourself so make sure you guys remember that as well tip number four is coming in with the trader and believe it or not the better animals aka the better amount of product that Crips is going to be able to create so you've gone ahead and purchased yourself a trader license and you want to know how exactly can I get the best benefit out of this now thanks to a few of you guys in my last video in the comments section we've now gathered a list of some of the best animals and carcasses that you can give to Crips to make the best money and the most production value and those are going to be three star buttons carcasses without being skinned, three star doe carcasses, three star sheep carcasses and also the buffalo skins and of course the three star cougar carcasses. If you guys know anything down below in the comment section that is besides those animals please feel free to help other people out but what I'm trying to say here is do not focus on the smaller animals and focus as much as you can on the larger animals. Another tip that I'm sure you are already aware of is that you can tow a deer or a carcass behind you whilst you've also got one on the back of your horse as you're seeing right here to maximise the amount of animals you can bring back to him and the amount of money that you can make. Tip number five coming in again for the trader this time is going to be make sure you always steal supplies do not purchase them. The reason I say that is because when you click steal supplies it sends you to a location not only extremely close to you but also you earn the XP and also the opportunity to loot the bodies and get some tarot cards or collectibles. So by purchasing these supplies not only are you wasting $20 and also wasting the opportunity to gain even more money and collectibles and XP 
but you're also basically just wasting time. You might as well go there and gather the equipment that is required. And also, like I said in the previous points, I found plenty of collectibles from dead bodies, and it's certainly something you should do as well. Coming in at number six is going to be every single white dot that you see on the map, whether it be a stranger or freak's encounter, make sure you go and do them. Rockstar Games have added tons of stranger events in this newest update. I mean tons. Now, the one I've got in the gameplay you're seeing right here, I saw a white blip on my map, and it turns out that actually it was a collectible. It was telling me where to find some bird eggs, as you can see right here. Other things that people have had, a friend of mine told me that they had a white circle that turned out to be a man looking at a treasure map. He was then able to kill them and steal it, and he gained a free treasure map. Another encounter that we've had as a group of friends is that we had someone asking us to take a picture of them and all we did is take a photo of them and we got rewarded $10. Pretty much every white blip that you see or stranger mission that you see now pays $10 or more. So make sure that you do them and again if there's any involving combat make sure that you loot the bodies and therefore you're going to be making a massive profit on top of whatever else you earn as well. Number seven is going to be always use your special eagle vision. The reason I say this is because even if you haven't purchased the treasure maps and you don't know the locations of specific treasure, like maybe ancient arrowheads, talon cards, things like that, tarot cards, then that means that you can actually find them by using your special ability. As you're seeing in the gameplay back here, you'll find a ton of rare items around the map, ranging from arrowheads to flowers, all the way to these um, bottles that you can find. And using this special ability allows you to see them, like I said, even if you don't know where their location already is. Another uh, little quick tip that I have for you guys as well that kind of correlates with this um, is to always have treasure maps open. Even if you're starting a mission, your treasure maps will always be open. And one of my friends actually advised me of this, which is very true, that sometimes you get sent out on a mission from one end of the map to the other and it might just turn out that one of your treasure map locations is in the area that it's sending you to. So it's always helpful to have a treasure map active for the collector at any given time. Coming in at number eight is going to be to do the small distance deliveries. Now I know a lot of you are probably thinking that I am kind of crazy advising this considering the longer distance deliveries earn you more money, but if you just hear me out here, I have a few things that I need to say. Now as you can see from the gameplay here, it told me that I would earn about $60 for a short distance delivery and about $70 for a long range delivery. Now when you do a long range delivery, it can take you anywhere from the Great Plains all the way down to Tumbleweed. When they say long distance deliveries, they really mean long distance deliveries. These deliveries are going to take you anywhere between 10 and 15 minutes for an extra $10. Now, if you do the short range delivery, as you can see from the gameplay, which I actually end up doing, I end up going from the Great Plains to the uh, train station, which really wasn't that far at all, and it was only for $10 less. Also, by the way, this was a really close call at the train track. I got really, really worried. I thought I was about to get run over by the train right there. But what I'm saying is that once you get to a higher level and you're starting to deal with hundreds of dollars worth of cargo, then consider doing the long range deliveries. But I don't think the risk is worth it for $60 for a $10 more reward for doing the long range deliveries. The only reason why you would want to do them is if you're XP grinding, in which case you definitely do want to do them because they'll be earning you a lot more XP. Number nine is going to be another tip that I think you guys are going to find quite helpful, and that is going to be just make sure that you bring back bounties alive while you're doing bounty hunting. This might be kind of obvious, so I'm just going to brush over this one quickly before we get onto the final tip, and that is going to be that bringing back bounties alive by tying them up with the lasso and bringing them back to the jail actually rewards you more XP and more money for bringing them back alive rather than dead. So if you are focusing on leveling up your bounty hunting skill and the role as the bounty hunter, make sure that you are doing this because this is going to be the way that you're going to grind that XP a lot faster. And personally, it's really not hard. All you have to do is go to the locations, especially if you've got some friends. If you're bringing back two targets, it's a lot easier. But if you're doing it solo, I would say maybe kill one and bring one back tied up. But at the end of the day, the moral of the story is that if you want the XP and the more money, bring back the targets alive. 
And finally, for number 10, that is going to be in regards to the Outlaw Pass. I've had a lot of questions over on social media about the Outlaw Pass, and I think it's time that I finally clarify exactly what this Outlaw Pass is. You've probably heard about the Outlaw Pass and you've seen it on the progress menu, but you don't know exactly what it is. Now, the Outlaw Pass is going to be a special pass that goes all the way through 70 ranks. Now, if you purchase the Outlaw Pass for 35 gold bars, by the time you reach rank 70, you would have unlocked a ton of exclusive items. Now, what people don't realize is that you don't have to purchase the Outlaw Pass. You can still rank up to rank 70 and unlock non-exclusive items. However, that isn't the most important part about why I'm telling you this. The most important part is that if you haven't purchased the Outlaw Pass and you get to rank 70, if you purchase the Outlaw Pass at rank 70 or whatever rank you end up getting to, you still unlock unlock all of the items that you would have unlocked if you had have purchased it. So if all of your friends are unlocking all these exclusive items and you feel a bit left out because you can't afford it just yet, don't worry about it. You're just not getting the benefit of the extra XP. Have fun in the game, grind the game out, and if you reach rank 70 or whatever rank that you do and you can finally afford the Outlaw Pass, I would say do it because not only that it's also going to be rewarding 35 gold bars back so you'll end up earning your money back completely. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's tip video if you have let me know down in the comment section below anything else you've picked up that I can include in the next video. So long, stay cool and adios.